What's up everybody, another beautiful day on the Dragon Isles, and today I'll be covering everything you need to know about the Elementalist build for Enhancement Shamans going into the Raid Vault of the Incarnates, going over builds, rotations, and what to play on each boss for progress. Now the recent build guide I made showcased a version of this build with Fire Nova, but this time we're going for the Frost Shock Slaps, which does a lot more on single target and low target cleave slash AoE, aka as long as there's not like 20 plus mobs. So for the main build, we of course get good old Wind Fury Totem, so that melee doesn't cry, all the Lava Lash Talents, Molten Assault, Hot Hand, Ashen Catalyst, and Lashing Flames. We also get Primordial Wave, with the Primal Maelstrom and Splintered Elements Talent, so Primordial Wave caps out our Maelstrom, and we gain 10% haste per extra lightning bolt generated, which lasts for 12 seconds, and it's up to 60% on bosses with adds. Who needs Bloodlust? And you of course also get all the Maelstrom Talents in the middle of the tree, improved raging and overflowing maelstrom, as well as sunder so that we can get elemental weapons, storms wrath and elemental blast. We then get feral spirits with witch doctors and sister, I mean 2 second feral spirit CDR per maelstrom gained, now if procs be on your side you'll pretty much have your wolves up all the time, at least on AoE. We of course also get the elemental spirits for more element damage, frost, nature, fire, and lastly we get ice strikes and hailstorm, as well as swirling maelstrom, so ice strikes deals a decent amount of damage by itself, also triggers crash lightning on AoE, but more importantly increases the damage of your next frost shock by 100%, and hailstorm increases frost shock damage by 15% per maelstrom spent on an ability, up to 10. Now as far as our class tree goes, I'll have a cookie cutter class tree if you will in the builds that I've linked in the descriptions below. Now these builds can of course be altered depending on content or boss, don't need purge, get something else. Now for a select few bosses, mainly primal council and possibly broodkeeper heroic if you're on add duty, <laughs> then you'd go for a pure AoE cleave version of this build, which is really just remove elemental blast and get crash lightning. But this is only good on bosses where you'd AoE from start to finish without ever needing prio damage, which is why broodkeeper is a bit iffy, since last phase is pure single target. You still do good single target without elemental blast, so how does this build play? Again enhances a chaotic proc spec, so we mostly follow a prior list, because at any given moment you can get a hot hand proc, or cap your maelstrom, or get a stormbringer proc, and everything changes what you should be pressing next. But as far as priority goes, for single target you want feral spirits on cooldown, lava lash if hot hand is active, or you have 6 or more stacks of ash and catalyst, which is the lava lash damage increase. You want a lightning bolt if you're at 10 stacks with primordial wave buff up, otherwise your elemental blast if you're at 5 plus stacks with any wolfies up, or if you're about to hit 2 charges, ice strikes, frost shock with hailstorm buff, primordial wave, lava lash if flame shock is about to run out, which should never be the case, then elemental blast if you're at 5 stacks of maelstrom, lightning bolt if you're at 10 stacks and only 1 charge of elemental blast, and then you fill in with storm strike, unempowered lava lashes, frost shocks and flame shocks, and then swapping over to AoE or whenever adds spawn on bosses, your priority changes a little bit, so you want to spread flame shock with lava lash if you have less than 6 targets with flame shock up, lightning bolt if you have 10 stacks of maelstrom with primordial wave buff up, and preferably 6 targets with flame shock so you get that 60% extra haste, but that depends on well how many adds spawn. Then you go chain lightning if you're at 10 maelstrom with 3 plus targets, otherwise you elemental blast, ice strikes, frost shock with hailstorm buff which you get from spending maelstrom, lava lash targets without lashing flame debuff to increase their damage taken from flame shock, sundering, lava lash, elemental blast with 5 stacks of maelstrom and any of your wolfies up, storm strike, frost shock, flame shock, and well again feral spirits pretty much on cooldown. And if you play like primal council where you have crash lightning, you of course want to keep your crash lightning buff up so you AoE more. Now I greatly recommend trying out the add on Hikili, which is a rotation helper which tells you what ability you should be pressing next, and it recalculates this based on your current procs and it is very accurate, and it's extremely helpful when you want to learn new rotations for builds, and especially for a spec like enhancement. Now for the actual raid vault of the incarnates, both 
mythic and heroic and to some extent normal, you'd play the main build without Crash Lightning. And for Primal Council, you'd swap Elemental Blast for Crash Lightning, since it's constant AoE and they need to die at the same time. So there's no use in slapping extra single target damage into one of them when you can just cleave think of the path. So for Aranog, for example, most of the time you're slapping boss and add spawn every now and then. You might be able to primordial wave cleave lightning bolts on a lot of the add spawns, unless your co DPSers are extremely paddy, as well as when the elemental spawns during intermission. And Frost Shark will hit all adds as well, so we have plenty of on demand burst AoE for this fight. Same thing goes for Senarf, you won't be able to fully pad on the itsy bitsy spiders, but you'll have cleavy Frost Sharks for them and primordial wave for the big spider, and possibly small spiders if you manage to spread flame shock to them. Now on Dethea, you'll have all your burst ready for each time you need to go to the platforms and nuke down the adds. And for Kura Grim Totem, you'll have a we for whenever adds spawn during the intermission. Not constant, but plenty with Primordial Wave Cleaving and Frost Sharks. Broodkeeper Heroic, like I mentioned earlier, could be a case of taking away Elemental Blast for Crash Lightning if you need more add damage. And if you're in the add killer group, which you should be, there's not too many targets there that ever spawn, so you can mostly hit everything with Lightning Bolts, Chain Lightnings, and your Frost Sharks, so it's great. Now on Mythic, where you rotate groups on Broodkeeper, you'll most likely do the standard builds. So you still have plenty of single target damage and you're still able to AoE plenty. And the same is true for old Rasagath. The biggest AoE pad is the intermission adds and again you'll be able to 6 target cleave so you'll do plenty. Now as far as stat weights goes for enhanced elementalist build, it's still mastery over haste over crit over verse. But always sim yourself and use Droptomizer to check your upgrade's actual value. I myself have a little bit too much haste at the moment so anything with crit currently sims very high for me. Sim yourself! And yeah that's pretty much it for this this build guide for the Frost Shock Slapping Elementalist Enhancement Shaman. I hope it helps you out in the raids, go get that pad! Now for my UI, I will link my default UI code so you can import it in edit mode, as well as most of the main weak auras I use for enhancement. I can't share all of my weak auras, nor can I share my plater settings, as I've gotten them from subbing to now on Twitch, so I'm not gonna give out his work without his say so. But yeah, let me know what you think of this enhancement build and if you've tried it in raids. If you have any questions at all, hit me up or become a patron or Twitch sub and get access to the Stanky Gaming Discord, which is the fastest way to get a hold of me and it's filled with a lot of useful info and helpful people if you need any help PvE wise or for your raid progression. And don't forget the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe and most importantly ring that notification bell. We gotta beat that YouTube algo! I'm also streaming all my progression rating on Twitch, Wednesday, Thursdays and Sundays, Stanky Gaming. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, I will uh, see you next time. Stone Stank!